For over a hundred years, humanity has imagined a computer that's as easy to interact with as a person. ChatGPT introduced the world to this technology and became the fastest growing consumer application of all time. Now, corporations around the world have started building closed source, artificially intelligent devices. Six weeks ago, we realized there was an opportunity to build an open source foundation with this next generation of computers, the Linux of this space. Something open, flexible, and free. An operating system with a language model at the center of it. I'm holding the first device powered by this operating system in my hand right now. It's called the O1. This is the O1 Lite, the first open source language model computer. You talk to it like a person, and it operates a computer to help you get things done. You can run the language model on your computer at home or in our server in the cloud, making the O1 Lite fully portable when connected to Wi-Fi or a hotspot. To use it, you just push, talk, and then it thinks and responds. Let me show you what it can do. When's the next sunny day? One moment. The next sunny day is on March 9th. Great. Am I doing anything on that day? Let me check your calendar. You have no events scheduled for March 9th. So because the O1 is operating my personal computer at home, I didn't need to set up my calendar. It can just use it. Nice. Can you see if there are any concerts in Seattle on that day? Yes, you have several options. Option one, Bad Bunny will be performing at the Climate Pledge Arena. That's perfect. Can you add that to my calendar and then copy and paste a link to the ticket into the calendar event? And then actually, if you could text page the link and say something like, hey, do you want to go to this? Done. The concert is on your calendar, and Paige has been texted. Awesome, thanks. You're welcome. By the way, you've just received an email from Mike asking about your progress on an article. Would you like to respond to it now? So, I need to send that file to Mike, but it's on my computer at home. Hey, that article should be on my desktop. It's called the Universal Interface. There's a file titled the universal interface.pdf on your desktop. Do you want me to send it to Mike? Now, at this point, I could ask my light to read or even edit that document, but I'm just going to send it to Mike. Yes, please send it. The document has been emailed to Mike. Great. So you can kind of think of the O1 light as like a smart person that's in front of your computer. How could that be useful? Let's head back now and I'll show you something even bigger. This is my laptop, and it's the one that the light has been operating. Out of the box, it's pretty good at using my computer, but it can't do everything. So let's teach it to use a desktop application that it's never seen. Hey, I want to teach you something. Sounds good. What do you want to teach me to do? I'm going to show you how to send a Slack message. OK, I'm ready. What's the first step? First, open Slack. It looks like Slack is open. Did I do that right? Yeah, you did. Great, what's next? Hit Command-K. Done. Did I do that correctly? Yeah, that worked. OK, now type out the name of the recipient, like, for example, Ty, then press Enter. Done. Let me 
know if I did that right. Yes, you did. Now, I want you to click on the text box at the bottom that says Message Tie. I've clicked the text box. Did I do that right? Yeah, you did. Okay, now you can write the message. For example, hey Ty, then press enter. It looks like I've sent the message, is that right? Yes, and that's all there is to this skill, so you can save it now. Sure thing. I've just learned the skill send a Slack message. So you can do this with any workflow, any desktop application, or even a pipeline of applications and websites without setting up any authentication. It just uses your computer. But here's where it gets interesting. OK, now I want you to monitor my email. If you get any invoices, could you take a look at the attachments and then Slack all the relevant details to Mike? All right, I'll monitor your inbox for invoices. If I see one, I'll Slack the details to Mike. Now, days later, when I get an invoice, which I'll test just by emailing one of myself, it will Slack it to Mike and let me know about it. I just sent a Slack message to Mike with the basic information of the invoice. That was the O1 Lite. You can pre-order one today for $99, and the one you get won't require a computer. You'll be able to use it as a standalone device that taps into our hosted service. But developers can get their hands on this right now. We are releasing the O1 Lite, the O1 Server, and the O1 OS developer previews today. The software, CAD files, wiring diagrams, everything you need to make an O1 Lite in an afternoon so you can build your own personal or commercial AI devices tomorrow. I want you to imagine a world with doctors that fit in your pocket, smart toys that talk and teach, companions, Pokédexes, and robots, all running in an open ecosystem with shared protocols and innovations the Cambrian explosion of AI devices. In the next few weeks, we're going to release an open source language model for computer control, an app for your phone, and a handheld device that runs fully offline. If you want to build this future together, talk to me and thousands of other energized developers in our rapidly growing O1 community. Let's accelerate together. So we've covered Open Interpreter before. It's extremely interesting because it's open. As everyone is building their own proprietary solutions, their own proprietary devices, this company is building the Linux of AI devices. Now, the reason this is important is that before the age of the Facebooks and Instagrams and Twitters, there were developers that knew exactly what was going to happen before the rest of us did. They said the people who developed these closed source social networks to share pictures that will create a lot of problems down the road. They will collect your data. They will try to monetize your attention. They will do all sorts of nefarious things. They will annoy you with pop-ups and cookies and tracking. And you won't really have any choice because they will own it. And they proposed open source solutions. Most of the software out there has an open source side. And a lot of it is fairly good. Eventually, devices like this maybe the R1 or this O1 Lite, they will kind of help us run our lives. They will be our assistant, our AI on command. It will help us set appointments, do product research, just anything, anything, anything that you do will probably run through this. And a simple question to ask yourself is, who would you rather own that entire infrastructure that your entire life runs on? Do you want it to be the big corporations? And if you like everything that Google and Facebook and Microsoft, if you love everything they're doing, then maybe that's fine. But most people have varying degrees of, I, for example, hate pop-ups. I apologize for incessantly complaining about this, but the other day, when I was using an app on my phone to get into my garage, I got hit with a promotional pop-up that I had to interact with and close it out 
and asked me, were you sure it's the last chance to get this deal? I couldn't get into my house without getting hit a crummy ad, and that will only get worse. And most people have kind of developed alert helplessness because, well, what's the alternative? Well, open source is the alternative to that. Having code that you can see, that you can modify, might be a little bit complicated. You might have to learn a thing or two, but you will have freedom to choose whether you want these agents to be censored, whether you want them to showing you pop-ups or annoying commercial messages. You can build your own. They have a whole hardware section here, or you can pre-purchase this thing. So it's 109. It's the 01 Lite. So $99 per device plus shipping. I'll be very curious to see where this goes. Now, of course, we don't know how good this thing is going to be with a lot of these. Once people start getting their hands on them, testing it out, we'll know for sure. But I got to say, having strong competition to the large closed companies, having open source be a strong competition to them is very, very exciting to me. I think it's a good idea to pay attention to the space, support these developers as much as we can, if for no other reason than to just kind of provide a counterbalance to the closed monetize them till they bleed approach that some of these other companies are taking. We'll do a full deep dive into this when we have more info. My name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.